so good morning today we are going to discuss the sedimentary basins so we all know that sedimentary basins are the depressions they are the geosyncline they are the trough where thick accumulation of sedimentation is taking place so sedimentary basins are morphotectonic depressions where we are getting thick accumulation of sediments or they are the areas where sediments eroded from the upland areas are going to be deposited the classification of sedimentary basin is basically based on tectonics and there are three type of tectonic movements at some places the plates they are coming towards each other at some places the plates they are moving away from each other at some places the plates are moving side by side with each other and that's why the sedimentary basins can be classified into four type of sedimentary basins depending on the type of movements of the plates number 1 because of the convergent plate movement number 2 because of the side by side movement number 3 because of the spreading center when the plates they are moving away from each other and when the plates moving away from each other two type of sedimentary basins are formed either within the plate or between the plates and then the hybrid type of sedimentary basins are different type of sedimentary basins which are uh, formed by a combination of process such as remnant basin so first we are going to discuss the sedimentary basins which are formed by convergent plate movement the sedimentary basins which are formed by convergent plate movement means when two plates they are moving towards each other there are three combination number one when both the plates are continental in nature when both the plates are oceanic in nature or when one plate is oceanic and another plate is continental so we all know that is one plate is continental and another plate is oceanic the oceanic plate will subduct but if two both the plates are continental or both the plates are oceanic the plate which is having higher density that will subduct and the plate which is lower density that will overwrite that will be the overwriting plates and if there are two plates and one plate is subducting like this this is subducting and this is the overriding plate this plate is moving in this direction and this plate is moving in this direction so the plate which is subducting the plate which is inclined roughly at an angle of about 30 to 40 degree which is characterized by the focus of earthquake is known as benyas so this is benyas now up to what depth this plate will subduct that will subduct up to a depth of about 600 to 700 because after this depth the temperature will be too high and because of this high temperature the plate will melt so here the plate will melt because of the geothermal gradient we all know that the temperature increases as we go deep into the earth so here the plate will melt and this surplus melting material which is known as magma that will come out and the eruption of this molten material known as magma when it will come out means on the surface it is known as volcanic eruption so 
there is not a single volcano but there is a chain of volcano and this chain of volcano if located on continental plate it is known as magmatic arc and if this chain of volcano is located on oceanic plate it is known as island arc the example of island arc is japan and the example of magmatic arc is the is the andes mountain that's why the highest located active volcano of the world known as cotopaxi is found on the andes mountain because the plastic plate is subducting below the south american plate now if two plates are moving so what is this this is magnetic arc this is magnetic arc or this is island arc depending on the situation whether it is located on the continental plate or oceanic plate we are know about the continental plate and the oceanic plate now in this situation there are different type of sedimentary basins number one sedimentary basin is known as trench second type of sedimentary basin is known as pore or basin third type of sedimentary basin is known as back or basin fourth type of sedimentary basin is known as retro or basin so the trench the four arc basin back arc basin and the retro arc basin there are four type of sedimentary basins which are related with convergent plate movement this convergent plate movement is also known as destructive boundary because the plate is going to be consumed if one plate is subducting plate is the the crust is decreasing if the plates are coming towards each other subduction is taking place the total crustal area is decreasing this is known as destructive plate movements and there are two situation number one when the plate is subducting and and, and second when the plate is colliding so here i am going to discuss the sedimentary basins which are formed during convergent plate movement means which are related with the destructive plate boundaries when one plate is subducting so the first sedimentary basin is formed when the plates are moving towards each other now this is the sedimentary basin this sedimentary basin is known as trench basin so if two plates are moving towards each other as soon as one plate bends to subduct a basin is formed where at the contact point of both the plates it means if two plates the whatever the nature of plate may be if two plates are continental one is continental one is oceanic or both are oceanic the plate which is heavier that will subduct and as soon as the plate one plate bends to subduct a depression is formed that bending itself forms the depression so as soon as the plate bends to subduct a depression is formed where at the at the contact point of both the plates this is known as trench this is known as trench if both the plates it means if both the plates are oceanic the what process will operate in this trench the marine process will operate from where the sediments will come into this trench they are generally starved of sediments there will be no much sediment into this trench 
but if both the plates are continental then obviously some sediments will be deposited and those sediments will be terrigenous sediments but generally the present day example of the trench are oceanic for example for example mariana trench now if this plate is going down now a very important term related with the subduction is accretion replace you must be knowing that the accretion replace and what are the accretion replace now if both the plates are oceanic it means the marine sediments will be there if both are continental then terrigenous sediments will be there it means what sediments will be there in the accretion replace is a debatable topic but it is sure that the sediments of the accretion replace will be highly deformed they will be highly deformed they will be under very high pressure because both the plates they are moving towards each other one plate is subducting and the sediments which were deposited here the scrap of material of the subducting plate the scrap of material of the subducting plate they will be deposited like this like a fish in this so the materials of the subducting plate which are scrapped off they may be many they may be volcanic they are known as accretion debris they are also known as accretion wedge wedge means they look like wedge in two dimension bridge means they look like a bridge in three dimension so this accretion debris may emerge above the sea level it when the accretion debris may act as island if they are emerging above the sea level they will act as island so if these are the for example accretion debris and if this is the part a depression is formed between the accretion debris and our a depression is formed between the trench and our so these sedimentary basins which are located between the trench and arc they are known as four arc basin so the classical example of the four arc basin are the this is sumatra these are the sunda trench the yanda equation depress and these the yanda magnetic arc the yanda magnetic arc the yanda equation depress the yanda sunda trench and this basin pb is the now this sedimentary basin known as four arc basin from where we get the sediments into this the sediments will be come from magnetic arc because this is trench this is already deficient of sediment so sediments will come from the magnetic arc what process will be there marine process will be there now what will the shape and size of this four arc basin that will depend what will the shape and size of the four arc basin that will depend if this is the 
subducting plate and this is the overriding plate this is the trench this is the trench for example sunda trench and here is the magnetic arm so the same and side of this four arm basin that will depend on this arc the size of what will the length that will depend that this arc is located close to the trench if the arc is located close to the trench size will be small and if the arc is located much away from the trench the size of the basin will be very large and this is located close or it is located away from the trench that depends on the angle of subduction if the angle of subduction is very steep the arc will be located very close to the trench and if the angle of subduction is very very gentle the arc will be located away from the trench it means the shape and size of the four arc basin will depend on the arc trench gap which ultimately depends on the angle of subduction so this is the four arc basin and the present day example is in the uh, sumatra island now the next most important sedimentary basins which are related with the convergent plate movement they are the bare arc basin in the case of bare arc basin if this is the subducting plate this is the overriding plate now this is here is the magnetic arm and if the basin is located here it is known as back arc basin this is known as back arc basin now the back arc basins are formed or the present day example of back arc back arc basin is in very close to japan island this is the this is the japan island and these are the bony trench and this is the sumisure and this basin is located between the trench and this is the bed arc basin now how this bed arc basin is formed generally what happens in both the plates are moving towards each other what we believe that compression is taking place but there are two very important situation depending on the rate of convergence and the rate of subduction this is the rate of subduction at what rate the plate is subducting and this is the rate of convergence at what rate the plates are coming towards each other if the rate of convergence is slow and rate of subduction is high in that situation there will be extension in the overriding plate in that situation there will be extension in the overriding plate here in this sumisu reef in this uh, this is the japan island means this is the already the island arc and the reef has taken place why because the rate of subduction of the basic plate below the japanese island is faster than the rate of subduction 
सॉरी द रेट ऑफ सब्डक्शन ऑफ द पेसिफिक प्लेट इज इज फास्टर देन द रेट ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस एज ए रिजल्ट देर इज स्प्लिटिंग इन द ओवर राइडिंग दिस जापानीज आईलैंड एज ए रिजल्ट रिफ्ट इज फॉर्म एंड दिस बेसिस आर बी नोन एज पैक बेसिन बिकॉज दे आर फिटेड पैक ऑफ दिस आर्क दिस इज द प्रिंट एग्जाम्पल एंड द सेडिमेंट विट आर बी वॉल्केनिक सेडिमेंट एंड द प्रोसेस इज मैरिंग प्रोसेस नाउ द लास्ट सेडिमेंट बेसिस विच आर फॉर्म when the plates are coming towards each other means convergent plate movement they are known as plate wall plates now in this plate is subducting now this is the plate here is the mountain and here is the depression and this is known as ridge wall Now this plate is moving in this direction. This is then this is these are mountains and these are basins. Now they are also known as retroarc foreland basin. And the present example is the below Andes mountain, behind Andes mountain. Now what is going on in this situation? If there are two plates. one is this and another is this and if the rate of subduction is slow and the rate of convergence is high in that situation there will be compression in the overriding plate the rate of subduction is slow and the rate of convergence is high in that situation there will be compression in the overriding plate this compression will form the will result in the thickening of the crust अगर कंप्रेशन हो रहा है किसी भी जगह पे अगर यहां पे भी हम या ऐसे कंप्रेशन करें तो बिकॉज ऑफ द कंप्रेशन दोनों तरफ से अगर हम कंप्रेशन करें थिकनिंग ऑफ द क्रस्ट विल टेक एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस थिकनिंग माउंटेन विल बी फॉर्म सो दीज आर द इंडियज माउंटेन नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीजिंग वेट ऑफ दिस इफ द वेट इज इंक्रीजिंग हियर इफ दिस इज द प्लेट एंड इफ द वेट on one side of the plate is increasing because of the increase in plate there will be pain and a basin will form this basin is known as foreland basin so these are the ratio of foreland basin or ratio of basin because they are located behind the arc this andes mountain arc the classical example of the magmatic arc and the basin which are located behind this magmatic arc andes mountain arc Retro arc basins. The continental process will dominate. The fluvial process will dominate. The detritic process will dominate. The eruptive process will dominate. The the volcanic sediments will come. So this is the retro arc basin. So the main sedimentary basins which are formed when the plates are moving towards each other are trench, four arc basin, back arc basin, and the retro arc basin. in next lecture we will discuss the sedimentary basins which are formed during convergent plate movement when the plates are colliding means peripheral foreland basin piggy bank basin and hybrid basins also the remnant basin and and the uh, inverted basin etc thank you and good luck to all hum